dear colleagues, I am Samer Hakmi from the University Heart Center in Hamburg. I'm a cardiac surgeon. I'm going to present today a case of a minimally invasive percutaneous lead extraction with an excimer laser system. I am going to present today a 47 years old male patient with chronically secreting fistula, swelling and warmth of the CRT pocket. The lab diagnostics were positive. We had 9,000 lycosides and 18 CRP. You can see here in this picture the location of the fistula at the end of the CRT pocket. This is a class 1 indication for lead extraction. The patient had a history of upgrade to CRTD with a new dual coil RV lead in January 2014 before he had the implantation of a DDD-ACD in July 2009 by ventricular fibrillation. The X-ray shows a dual coil RV lead from July 2009, another dual coil RV lead from January 2014, and one atrial lead from the same implantation 2009 and one LV lead from January 2014. As you can see here, the X-ray from the lateral side showing the location of the four leads. We have here three active fixation leads, two in the ventricle and one in the atrium. The patient was implanted with the CRT device due to dilated cardiomyopathy, a very low ejection fraction, and due to recurrent VTs. He had in the history EV block 3, and he is pacemaker dependent. The operation was done by my colleague and I, Dr. Simon Pesha, in the University Heart Center of Hamburg. For lead extraction patients in our hospital, we are using the excimer laser system and we are stabilizing the leads with lead locking devices, which is produced by Spectronetics. And we are now using the GlideLight 80 Hz laser sheet to extract the chronically implanted leads. At the beginning of every case, we are starting to prepare the femoral side. We are implanting an atrial sheet. Other venous sheets can be implanted to deal with pacemaker dependency and occlusion balloons, like in a case of SVC tier, to use the occlusion balloon to have a stable hemodynamic till you can open the chest to save the patient. We are starting here to cut uh, the old incision, the scar tissue and the included fistula. As you can see here at the beginning, you have to free the leads from the adherence and the scar tissue in the CRT pocket. Then we are removing the CRT device. We are clamping the device at the beginning and disconnecting the leads. Here we don't have to forget the pacemaker dependency. We have to check that the rhythm is stable and that the external pacemaker wire is working well. We are preparing here the leads. We are cutting the leads at the beginning of the extraction procedure. We are freeing more leads from the adhesions in the CRT pocket. We are trying here with my colleague to free the old abandoned leads. This is our VVI peacemaker system, which will be used during the bridging time before we do the second contralateral reimplantation. Here we are cutting another two leads. We are measuring at the beginning the lumen of the leads with the accessory kit tools. Here we are removing the fixation sleeves in both leads. We are removing the suture material from the CRT pocket. At the beginning, we are using a cleaning stylet to open the lumen of the lead. We are clamping this to know how deep we reached the tip of the lead. After that, we are inserting the lead locking device and comparing this with a cleaning stylet. We are closing here the LLD to stabilize the lead from the end to the tip of the lead. After that, we are using our etibond sutures 
to stabilize the LLD with the pacemaker lead together. We are doing the loop at the end of the LLD two times and going to the second lead. Here we are repeating the same procedure. At the beginning, if you have new implanted leads, you can try to explant these leads just by pulling them after stabilizing with lead locking device. Here you can see the LV lead explanted without any problems. For the other leads, we are going to connect our 14 French uh, glide light sheet to the laser machine and calibrate it at the beginning of this extraction procedure. Here you can see the rate, 80 Hz. We are going with the laser catheter to the vessel entry guided by the lead and the LLD and we are starting to extract this ventricular lead. You can see here in the fluoro the SVC shock coil of the ventricular lead. We are trying to free the adherence between the shock coil and the venous wall. Sometimes you have to be patient here to free the adherence between the shock coil and the venous wall. I'm watching here our, the patient hemodynamics, the atrial line and the pacing stability. You can see here on the screen 3D reconstruction of our CT slices. This reconstruction picture is showing us a lot of adhesions at the SVC level. In some cases of aggressive adhesions, we are using additional intraoperative venography. We are doing this using a 5 French pigtail catheter connected to our contrast agent injector. This venography can be used to visualize adhesions during the lead extraction. And here we can continue to extract our RV lead. You can see here the extracted distal coil with a little bit adhesions around. As you see, Dr. Pesha here is inserting the next lead inside the glide light laser sheet. You notice here again under fluoroscopy the vessel entry level. It's very important always to control the direction of the glide light handle. Now is the occluded subclavian vein recanalized again, we can insert our Tirumo wire and using our implanting sheet to implant the temporary RV lead. This percutaneous implanted lead will be used for the temporary pacing during the bridging time till the new reimplantation. Now we are going to extract the proximal coil of the ICD lead, which was implanted for eight years. You have sometimes to think about upsizing the tool. Here we are connecting our 16 French laser catheter to have a progress, calibrating again inserting the LLD and the lead and inserting the laser sheet again to the same position using the rail effect of the lead. After upsizing our glide light sheet, we could free the lead from the adhesions at the SVC level. During the extraction, we have to think about our TAE monitoring while we crossing the tricuspid valve. Here we are extracting the distal tip of the ICD lead from the right ventricle. As you can see here, the aggressive adhesions at the distal tip of the ICD lead. After the extraction procedure, 
we are cleaning the pocket from the infected tissue which have to be extracted in the most cases two stitches closing the vessel entry to avoid any bleedings disinfecting the pocket using hydrogen peroxide here we are putting our drain tube from the disinfected pocket closing the CRT pocket using a single vicral sutures closing the incision At the end of the procedure, we are securing our externalized pacemaker system. I hope this video was useful for you and thank you for watching.